This will be a series of tut three tutorials on the use of the lecture and library functionality in TDO version 12. Part one will explain why you should take advantage of this functionality and also introduce the interface to you. Part two will explain the basic functionality and part three will review some of the more advanced features and some of the optimization that you can do when you become more experienced. So what are the advantages to you of using the lectures and library function in TDO? You preserve within one program for the entire life of your practice all the content that you create. That content can be organized by date, by name, by category, or by subject. Adding clinical cases from varied sources into a lecture can be extremely time consuming, but with TDO functionality, you save hours of preparation time because everything is in one place and so easily accessible. The lectures and libraries are accessed in the image organizer just to the right of the patient folder. They use the typical Windows hierarchical file spread structure and can be listed alphabetically by right clicking to bring a drop down measure up. The small arrows next to some of the categories means that there is a daughter or child category within that lecture. For example, if I go to my Washington State Association of Endodontists lecture and select the arrow, the daughter or child lectures are shown in a list. By selecting CBCT imaging for endodontists and selecting the arrow again, you can see that that lecture was divided itself into several different parts. In other words, when we created this lecture for the Washington State Association of Endodontists, we created it in TDO. If you look at the stru file structure here, I gave three topics initially, office design and ergonomics part one and two. I had a separate category for the titles that I used. And then I had a CBCT imaging for endodontists. But that lecture itself had four parts. So within the one lecture, you can see you can divide your lectures up very, very discreetly. And this gives you tremendous flexibility uh, when planning and designing your lectures or in case presentations. For example, I use this lecture when trying to explain to patients what a tooth or root fracture is or explaining furcal repairs to them. The library function, I also organize by date and type. For example, when I have interesting anatomy, I place it in my anatomy topic in the library. I even keep personal or professional materials in the library, so I always know where they are. Let's review the basic functionality. To create a lecture or library is very simple. Highlight lectures, right click, and select new from the drop down menu. That enables you to name the lecture or library topic. After that is a simple matter to copy and paste material into the lecture or library. For example, Let's create a TDO test lecture and populate it with some slides. We'll go to my 2014 North Carolina lecture and go down to the title slides. The title slides come up. Every time you click on one, a larger picture of that slide comes up in the pane. And the order in which you click is the order in which they will be arranged. You can click multiple slides by pressing the control key and every time you click a slide that will select the slide. 
You can copy the slides. Now we'll go up to the lecture and paste them in. We go up to the TDO lecture that we're creating, right click, paste, and they are pasted in. Now let's enter some content from a patient. We can actually add a CBCT volume if we want, and we can open it from within the lecture. Let's also add some screenshots and radiographs from that case. They are selected. Right-click, Copy. Then you go up to your lectures. Choose the lecture you're building. Right-click, Paste, and they are pasted into your lecture. Now let's add some pictures from the same patient, but a different tooth. Again, pressing Control, we select the pictures that we want. I'll just select some random pictures here. Go back to the lecture, paste. And now those are in the lecture. Now let's add some PDFs from the library. We'll go to Biofilm Lit, Hapasalo, and copy and paste a PDF. Again, that's by right-clicking. You can open the PDF right there, but we just want to copy it for this exercise. Go back to your lecture, right-click again, paste, and that places that PDF in the lecture. Now, let's add a video. We'll go to Stephen Goodman, Video Clips, and select one. You can see that it will play within TDO and by, by selecting Open Video. Now when the videos come up, they're hard to see, so we change the view to Details, which is a print of them. Change the view there, and now you have them by titles and you can copy the one that you want. Go back to your lecture, right click, change the view, the view again back to the pane, and then go down and right click or paste the video into the lecture. You can see that it will play within TDO by selecting open video, So there are two things we're trying to get at. What's our best guess at the underlying truth? And second, what's the uncertainty in that guess? How unsure are we? And statistics is actually in some ways more about the second than the first. So when you realize that getting the uncertainty right is as important as getting your best guess right, then you understand what's so tough about statistics. Now let's add a series of slides. We'll go to where I store my research slides in the TDO library. You can see there is a lot of them. Let's choose biofilm in the palatal root. Now you can put them in any order that you want. I've already selected the uh, basic order that I want here. Then to select a row or a, a sequential pictures, press the shift key and then go to the end and that will select all of them. You copy that, go back to your lecture, right click, paste, and they will go into the lecture. We can arrange the slides in any order that we want. If you go up to the sort menu and click on the drop down, we can order the slides by the date the image was taken, the date that it was modified, the tooth, patient name, and category are for when you're sorting a patient uh, records, or a user defined. For example, this is one, this is the original order of the slides by the date taken. 
if I switch to the modified date, it puts a different order in. For lectures in library, typically you want to sort them by the user-defined category, which means that I can go ahead and click on a slide, click and drag it, and I can specify any order that I wish. And the sort menu will remember the last order that was used when you were in the user-defined uh, drop-down category. Now, this sorting of a large number of slides is very important. For example, let's go down to a lecture that I gave in 2007. And if I want to see all of my slides at once, you can see there's a lot of them. So to actually arrange this lecture, I want to maybe have a larger thumbnail. So that's why the pane was created here. You can click on an image and get a larger thumbnail of it, and then you can reposition them in the order that you want them. So the larger thumbnail on the left side of the screen is very valuable when you're sorting many, many slides where the thumbnail is small. Now, TDO has within it a slideshow capability that's very powerful, both for putting your lectures together or creating lectures for patients during case presentations. So after you have the the images aligned in the order in which you want. For example, I've already ordered these images in the order that I want, and I have a variety of, of file forms here. Here's a pan from a cone beam. Here's a JPEG from a camera. Here's a PDF. Here's a video. Here's some PNGs from my microscope. Here's a PowerPoint presentation. Here's a Word doc. Here's another video, here's an Excel spreadsheet, and here's a cone beam volume. So the slideshow will show all of these uh, very, very nicely, uh, all within TDO. So to start a slideshow, go ahead and collect your images. I'm going to, I've ordered these in a sequential order, so I'm going to use the Shift key and select all of them. And when you come up to the left side of the form, you can see two icons here. One is show selected. That will just show the slides that you have selected. The other is show all. It will show all of the slides in the form. We're going to use the show selected slides. When you click it, a form comes up and displays uh, the first image in your selection. If you go up to the right-hand corner, you'll see a next and previous button. This allows you to go forward and backward in your uh, slideshow. Over on the left, you have uh, three tabs for CBCT information, open volume and open patient draw. We'll be reviewing these uh, as we proceed. So let's just go through the slideshow. I'm going to go up and press next. It comes up with the next image. I'll press next again. Now it's loaded a PDF, and what's nice about TDO is this isn't only the first page of the PDF. This is the whole PDF, and you can go through the PDF while you're in the slideshow just by rotating your scroll. So I have the entire PDF right inside the slideshow, which is nice when you're giving lectures on literature. It's more than just a quotation of liturgy, you can actually go to the paper itself while you are in the TDO slideshow. We'll go to the next. These are PNGs from my electron microscope. And it shows these high resolution pictures very, very easily. This happens to be a PowerPoint presentation and you can actually uh, show the PowerPoint presentation without loading PowerPoint or without leaving the slideshow. Simply scroll with the mouse and you'll go through each slide in the PowerPoint presentation. I'm scrolling my mouse here. I'm going through that PowerPoint presentation right inside TDO. We'll go to the next slide. This is actually a Word document and it, it loads the Word document right within TDO, no problem. You can double click on the video and play it again if you want a larger one. 
then going to the next slide. This is an Excel spreadsheet. It shows fine. And this is actually a, a cone beam volume. What is nice is I can actually open, if I made a cone beam final report on this, I can open it up right from here just by clicking CBCT information. That will loan. This is the report that I made on this patient. It brings it up. I can actually open the volume if I want from this. I'll just load the initial part of it because I don't want the patient information to be seen here. I simply click on it. It is now loading that volume. And that completes the slideshow. Now the last functionality I'd like to cover in this uh, introduction is the ability to create PowerPoint presentations. It's very efficient actually creating your lectures in TDO. And then when you go on the road, you simply take whatever, whatever you've created, create a PowerPoint presentation out of it. And that's what you can show on your laptop. But having all of the material from your clinical database available when you are actually creating the lecture has saved me hours and hours of time. So for example, let's just take some simple I'll just take a simple presentation. Let's say I wanted to take this presentation on the road on my laptop. Laptop. All I would do is select them, come up to this icon, which is Create PowerPoint Presentation. When you click on it, TDO goes out and it creates a PowerPoint presentation for you very, very efficiently. And then you just save that as a PowerPoint presentation. And you can put that into your laptop and it will show it even the videos. It'll even put the videos and PDFs in for you. So this is a very, very efficient way to create lecture materials, and you never lose any lecture material at all because everything is actually in TDO. In part three of this lecture, we're actually create a real lecture from our, using a variety of cases from many patients that will take advantage of some of the more sophisticated uh, capabilities of this image organizer.